So ladies and gentlemen, on our introductory to complex numbers, the first thing we're going to talk about is actually imaginary numbers. All right. And if you guys remember, when we were talking about solving system, or I mean solving equations, you had to find the values of your equation that make it true. So what we did was we used inverse operations. Then we started talking about quadratics, where sometimes we had more than one variable, and we had to use a factoring technique, right? And that's what we've been practicing over and over and over again, factoring, because it takes a lot of practice to get really good at factoring. However, when we have problems where we only have one variable, we can just use the inverse operations. right? So if I said solve this or find the roots of this equation, what I can do is use inverse operations. Add 4 to both sides by addition property of equality. Then I have x squared equals positive 4. Then my inverse operation of squaring a number is to square root. So you take the square root of a number and you say x equals plus or minus 2. Because positive 2 times 2 equals 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4, correct? So there's two examples. And then through our knowledge, we also knew that those are your two x-intercepts of a graph, right? And that's where the graph crosses. Those are also the solutions that make our equation true. Cool, right? So now what I'm going to bring to you, Anna, is let's do a different equation. And obviously, you guys have talked about x equals negative 2 and, and positive 2. Those are numbers you guys know, right? Those are what we call real numbers. They're whole numbers, and they're real. So what we're going to do is, what happens if you come across an equation that looks like this? Well, the same mathematics is going to apply. Inverse operations. Right? You're just, just, did you understand what I did in the last one? Yes. OK, you're going to do the same, same thing. So this is what I wanted you guys to write down. I said don't have to worry about that first example. But you need to write this one down. So then we have x squared equals negative 1. Now, to take the square root of that, well, now we come to a little quandary here. We have, how do you take the square root of a negative number? Because we said a positive number times a positive number is positive. A negative number times a negative number is positive. The only way to get a negative number is to multiply a positive times a negative, right? But then the number wouldn't be the same. So is it possible in the real number system to take the square root of a negative number? No, it's not, right? So we're still going to write what we can write this as. The square root of negative 1, we write as i. So what I want you, when you guys are thinking about this, when I say, um, this, what does i represent? I just want you guys to think of i represents whenever we have to take the square root of a negative number. Okay, so whenever you have to take the square root of a negative number, we're gonna re or a one, we're gonna represent that as i. All right, and that's kind of the basic definition of your imaginary numbers. All right, so 